One of the things that's been talked a lot and, and uh, about, and uh, really in the past has had good bipartisan support, and I think it has the opportunity of good bipartisan support as an infrastructure package. And uh, we talk we talk in terms of you know railroads and runways and uh, roads, uh, the three R's, but we don't talk a lot about the uh, you know the infrastructure in terms of. Uh, of broadband, so you can have all those things in place, and if you aren't connected, you know, as as members have been talking about stories, and then you all have relayed stories, it simply doesn't work. Uh, so I, I guess what I'd like to know, Commissioner Pye, and, and yeah, the the rest of you guys can chime in also, but uh, I hope that we have a firm commitment from you all in the sense of uh, you know wanting to weigh in, be part of the infrastructure package, in the sense of giving good advice, uh, so that we can include. Uh, not just the three R's, but have broadband in any package that comes forward. Senator, absolutely. Uh, obviously, we defer to the elected branches of government, but back in March, I said that to the extent that Congress is considering an infrastructure package, I would hope that the digital infrastructure, that broadband is a part of that. It's increasingly important for all walks of American life, from agriculture to healthcare, and uh, there are too many Americans who don't have it. And so uh, we're, I'm certainly uh, committed to working and on it. And I would agree. I, you know, we make the, the decision, okay? But where you can be helpful is just giving good information, you know, in the sense of that's really what it's all about. And uh, I'll tell you, unless you, you know, most of us have the opportunity to be all over the, our states and, uh, you know, we're in the, in the hinterlands and it does get very, very difficult. Uh, Commissioner O'Reilly. Thank you, thank you, Senator. I was going to just make two points. One is that if the decision is made in terms of infrastructure, I, I would hope you look at the Commission's high cost fund for purposes of where the dollars are spent rather than creating a new program okay. or using NTIA's program, which I think has had past experience has been difficult it, it, it being pleasant. Uh, so I think that is something that we have demand for that we can't meet with our current dollars that would be that could be uh, filled in with uh, added dollars from the Congress. And two would be that if you look at uh, authority in terms of the Commission's authority overall to push back on some of the barriers to deployment that have been posed by state, local, and tribal governments. And we want to be respectful of them as the chairman highlights, but, but I've been working on this for 25 years and some of these things are the same problems we had in 1995. Can you give a, a couple of examples regarding that? Sure, there's, there's two parts that, are, that dominate. One is the cost and the second is, is the approval process. I was just in New Orleans. Well, that's what I said, in pushing back against state and tribal. Oh, sure. Yes, so-, so what, what specifically do we need to- Right, so it is the, we have some authority, and I think it's extensive authority, but I think it would be added if, if Congress were to uh, amplify those points to make clear that we want broadband deployed. And, and I've, you know, there's some things that are already banned by uh, localities uh, and states, such as RF exposure and aesthetics, that seem to keep coming back. De facto moratoria are still happening um, in, in the United States, even though they're already prohibited in some regards. So we have to constantly fight over what the language is, and if Congress can clarify that for us, it would be very helpful. Good. I think from where I sit, um, uh, Senator, is that we need to make sure that um, our house is in order, and what I mean by that is uh, when we approve and consider and look and evaluate different technologies, we need to make sure that they are appropriate for the surroundings. So if I live on top of the mountain, which I don't and won't, um, uh, you, know, uh, you know, stringing fiber to me might not be uh, the best uh, way to, uh, to connect me. So we've got, you know, satellite, we've got um, NGSOs, we've got, um, you know, TV white spaces, we've got other things that we need to make sure are on par that have a chance uh, to be approved and greenlit uh, uh, by this agency. So. Uh, uh, again, it's it's everything what everybody said and the things that we haven't thought about that you will help us with. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair or Madam Chairman. Senator Daint. Jerome Capito, Ranking Member Coons, thank you very much and uh, congratulations, uh, Senator Capito. It's an honor to call you Chairwoman Capito. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well done. Uh, I want to thank the chairman, thank the commissioners for coming out today to testify. As the commission is well aware of out in Montana, it's a rural state. I think there's a real rural tone to today's hearing. Uh, that, and, and when you're from a urban area, uh, you can take connectivity for granted. We do not take connectivity for granted in a rural state like Montana. In fact, I look at some of the maps the commission's put out. Uh, you see gaping holes across the West. This is not only a barrier for businesses, for individuals, it's been talked as a public safety issue. And as Commissioner Clyburn stated, the maps don't even reflect the actual coverage in many areas. 
Uh, I spend a lot of time in my pickup, tens of thousands of miles driving around Montana. In fact, in Montana, we don't measure time in terms of oil changes, it's tire changes <laughs> as drive around the state. Uh, we see areas where it's, there's no cell coverage, let alone LTE coverage. And so very much look forward to work with each of you as we continue to close that gap. Uh, Chairman Pai, the commission recently completed an incentive auction is currently working on the repack and move